Hey, I'm Sabir Leekat at Teledyne Princeton Instruments and today we're going to go over another Python automation light field application example and this one's going to cover something I came across um, when doing some camera tests and this is really a good way to check if you know the, the camera's kind of buttoned up properly. We're going to check the analog gain on the camera. So just a background on what, what analog gain is, it's really the, the the mean signal uh, divided by the variance. Where's my little gain function? See down here, it really comes down to down to this. And really, we're measuring the uh, the shots on the camera versus the noise from those shots. And uh, this calculation really boils down to the the Poisson process uh, becomes a normal distribution once uh, once there are enough shots so you know you have n shots there are square root of n uh shots of noise and that's where this comes from so we can really verify the uh per, per digital count how many electrons are we getting on the sensor um and, and this is really handy just seeing um it, you know if, if the camera is kind of tuned up properly because the, the, that's a property of the voltage on the uh the output amplifier of the CCD. But uh, the reason we're showing this in Python is, is as I was, you know, kind of developing this, I ran, e e there are a couple of concepts here that would be really beneficial um, just, just in general automation cases. And, and the main ones really being, so here I have a, I have an ROI, which, which is always good. Um, just, just setting ROIs, that's always comes in handy. And here really we're just, um, we're, we're going to loop through different uh, capabilities of the camera. So um, get current capabilities and then where is this one? Get uh, maximum capabilities right there. So those, those are kind of new concepts that I hadn't covered so I thought it would be neat uh, to cover them. So let's just start off with what this demo or, or this, this script is actually doing. So let, let's just scroll all the way down to the meat or the main, I call it the meat. So as you know from the other examples or from your own uh, trials and tribulations, this all this line here, auto is going to launch an instance of light field, uh, add in process. Um, I'm going to connect to an experiment object here. I made myself an experiment called blank, which doesn't have any cameras loaded. So I'm going to load that just to, just to give myself a clear slate, if you will. And this, this is just a holding a holding variable for the file I'm going to output at the end. And then I have the serial number of the camera I want. I left these two functions um, commented uh, and, and I'll, I'll go through the, the, how they interact. So actually let, let's go through that first. So I'm going to load the camera. So let's go to my load camera function. So I'm going to load here. So you see I, I just um, in case I, I load my blank experiment, but in case there's anything there, because light field can only uh, have one camera at a time in experiment devices. No, I just clear out any experiment devices that might be there. Then I go through all the available devices. If I find the serial number that I want, then I add that. Then I break out of here, and I am good. I found my camera. So that that's just going to load. Oh, forgot. So my loca, I also set an ROI. So what I'm going to do here, let's go to my set ROI. So I'm going to find out if there's more than a hundred rows in the uh, in the sensor. If so, I'm going to set the center 100 by 100. So like I'm looking right at the middle of the sensor. Otherwise, I'm going to set it to 100 by one. I'm going to set it to a single row. We we have some single row arrays, so obviously you can't set those ROIs to 100 by 100. But in most cases, I'm going to be looking at 100 by 100 with this. Um, with this app. So I'm going to set my region of interest. So we, we do have an ROI sample, but again, it's always nice to see ROI's um, setting because it is a little bit different. So, you know, here's how you'd set an ROI very simply. Um, okay, so we've loaded the camera, set the ROI. Then what I'm going to do is actually I'll scroll back to the top of my crib where I have my comments. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to like, I have this hooked up to a, a diode, a gated diode. So I'm going to tune it so that at 100 milliseconds illumination on the highest gain setting, I'm getting, you know, under saturation levels of light. That way I can just snap through it and, and just get, you know, gain calculations at all settings. And, and I know that I won't saturate. Okay. 
So I've, you know, I'm going to load my camera. I'm going to set myself up. That's why I've commented this out because I got to set it up first. And then, and then I'll do this. This is what takes me through the rest of this, right? This is initialize cycle. So I go into my initialize cycle function. So I basically just, you know, you know, kind of set it up. If I can change the number of ports, I'm going to switch to one port readout. Um, and, and then I'm going to find out if ADC quality is a setting that's in the camera. If it is, I'm going to loop through them. And then in my loop, I'm going to call this cycle settings. So this is this is the rest of my settings. So if you look at it as a tree, the top of the, you know, it, it, I start out with quality. And then I go through uh, ADC speed and then analog gain um, if, if relevant. In, in some cases, the analog gain... Um, won't matter in, in let's say in the case of a blaze and a high speed quality port so basically I'm running through the, the gamut of the settings the camera could have and then what I'm going to do is right here is the get analog gain function this is where my, this is where my data is taken and where my calculation comes in so first I'm gonna just discard discard the first frame right because you know I, I don't want any a weird um, amplifier artifacts in, in the first frame. So I'm going to do my calculations with, with nice clean frames. Okay, so I'm going to, first I'm going to get my bias. I'm going to take five frames, combine them by average, and then, uh, you know, here, th this is a neat little trick you can use. And, and I, for I, I forgot to mention here, I'll come back to it. Um, you can see here I have get maximum capability. So for quality, this is going to tell me all of the qualities that are on the sensor. So maximum means just get maximum capabilities means it's going to return a iterable list of just all the qualities that are possible. And then once I pick a quality, you know, if, if quality exists, let's say quality exists, I pick a quality, then I go here, you know, in that quality, um, get current capability. So current is going to tell you in that quality which ADC speeds are applicable right because again we're going back to the case of a blaze you know you you, you can't set one megahertz ADC speed in, in high quality or, or high speed quality right so maximum means all of them that are available and the current means the, the ones that you can pick for the settings that are committed right now okay so that, that that's very um, use. Those are very useful functions to, to just find out what settings are, are valid. And then here, what I'm going to do is for my bias. So we're going back to the get analog gain function. I'm going to use this neat function here. It says it's like the get current capabilities, but now I'm, I'm getting the range because exposure time. You know, the, the, there's a there's a finite range for most of the cameras. It goes from zero to a really large number, but for some cameras. You can't set zero as exposure time. So just to mitigate that, I you know I use this function to get the range, and then I get the minimum output. And you know the the, the full details are in the automation programmer's manual. So check out these functions um, and how they work. But the, you know with the minimum, I'm gonna get whatever minimum value I could possibly have for that exposure time. So again, in most cases, it's gonna end up being zero. So I'm gonna set my exposure to minimum, and then I'm gonna go ahead. And, I'm gonna use the the capture. This is this is the synchronous function that just writes to memory. I'm not actually saving any data. Um, and I, I'm going to, you know, the, as, as you'll know, if you check the program's manual, this capture is going to return a image data set object. So I'm going to feed that into my data to NumPy. So let's go to that function. Okay, so data to NumPy. So I, I take an image data set. I take and and I just put in the number of frames I want to take. It's a little redundant because in capture I have to specify number of frames, but um, there's a reason for me putting that here. Just just reshaping at the end. So I, I just like uh, putting in a number of frames. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the image data out of the image data set, um, and then for the number of frames that I want, this this um, stuff here might look a little familiar and if so that's good because in 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 the um, automation ex example number two I think which is the advanced example um, another uh, sort of the same concept with, with C types and and using um, Marshall to kind of uh, allocate to, to convert the the dot net array object into something numpy can read this is nice and that's nice and fast. So I, I tried the naive method of doing this, which is element by element, um, just just getting the you know them out of the the system dot double or or, or system dot single into uh, 
uh, the, the numpy array one by one it takes forever so if you, because it, and that's understood right because you know it's, it's every object is doing the, this conversion whereas here we we take the memory we, we get the memory address right uh, of of, where, of the data and then we we tell it the type so here i have a dictionary i have, I have a dictionary of you know if it, the format coming out of the the image data set uh which t which c types it's going to be and you know th then it knows how to cast that array and now i get a result array and, th and this just this happens instantly and you'll remember from the previous sample that we, we were running this conversion um as every frame came in so it had to do it fast or else it just couldn't keep up so um again uh, very very handy for converting dot net objects so um in the end what i'm going to get is i'm going to get a, a data array so th this is the uh this is the flattened array. This is just the, uh, you know, frames by column by row times, you know, bytes per pixel um, elements. And then I'm going to reshape them into the form, you know, uh, the, the array that looks like an image. Okay. So that, that's what this data to NumPy returns. And then where were we? Okay. We were over here. Okay. So we're, we're capturing some data. So I'm, now this bias is going to be a... A data frame pretty much of my bias image okay and I do that then then I'm gonna change frame combined back to one I'm gonna set exposure time to a hundred and then I'm gonna capture three frames this is my illuminated frames and like I said in my notes frame one is gonna get the illumination I'm gonna compare frame one versus the bias to get the the signal on the sensor right and then frames two and three are gonna be subtracted from each other to get the variance so you could see it here uh, the mean signal is going to be the, the average of the illuminated versus bias. So you get the first frame illuminated. And then the variance, um, I'm going to take uh, first frame, uh, I'm sorry, second frame, third frame, subtract them, um, and then divide by two because variance adds per frame. So now I'm going I'm I'm to divide that by two. And then this is it. This is my analog gain now. I, I have signal, I, I have mean and I have variance, right? So I'm gonna, that, that division is going to return my analog gain. So this guy went down into here. So that's where this guy comes. So now I'm going to have this this gain string. is going to It's going to give me a number for this, right, in, in electrons per counts. And I'm just going to append that to my, my final placeholder, right? And when all this stuff is done, so I go back to my initialize cycle, it's going to write, write this file. So, and I, I have things printing in the console in the meantime too, just to show me, uh, make, make sure there's a sanity check to make sure it's working. So here's my write file, and I'm just gonna, you know, if, if the directory doesn't exist, um, then I'm gonna make the directory, and then I'm just gonna write that big string in there, and that's gonna be my text file, and I'm gonna log, of, and I'm gonna have a record that, hey, look, my my cameras seems tuned okay. You know, this is just like a spot check. This is something. You know, I, I I would do just just to check the health of uh, of camera that was worked on. So, um, okay, that's how the uh, app works. So let's run it. Uh, okay, so let's just we'll hit F5, right? So you see, I lift these two commented. We're not gonna load it yet. So I'll, I'll show you exactly what's going on. So we hit F5. We're gonna create the automation object. So let's let it do it. So light fields opening up on my other monitor, but. You know, once it's uh, yeah, I'll move over. There's my life field application starting. You see now it's going to load my blank, right? So then I'm gonna, now if I run this line, I have my desired serial number. You could see that the camera, you know, that serial number matches, right? So I do this, I run this. Okay, that's yeah, a little. Uh, where is it? Come on, where's my mouse? Right there. Right, now my camera's loaded because I ran that, right? So now I'm going to tune it. So what did I say? I was going to do 100 millisecond exposure at... Oh, and, and you could see that the set ROIs works. Now I have my custom region of interest with 100 by 100 ROI right in the middle. Okay. So now I'm going to have my, I have my tunable, tunable diode hooked up. You could see I would have waited... Uh, you know, I started cooling the camera beforehand, so now it's locked. You know, if you're gonna do measurements in a camera, you want to wait till it's uh, you know, it's, it's locked. So that's that's another reason I have for uh, 
for commenting this out, not starting it immediately. But you you know if it, it's conceivable if you were to turn this into a GUI, you'd have like you'd have this as a button. You'd maybe have that as a button, and, and you might have a wait for cooling loop. So you know very very easy to turn all this stuff into a GUI using using one of the uh, Python libraries. Um, so okay, so I'm gonna I'll take my highest gain. So low noise. I have two qualities here. My my analog gain is high, so let's just uh, I'm gonna keep this running. I'm gonna set up my tunable dial. See, I have my hundred by hundred region in the middle. I'm gonna have my stats window showing. Oops, I have to grab my stats window. Okay, so this is my hundred by hundred region. I'm just gonna so I got my uh, diode right here. I'm gonna tune it. I'm gonna auto scale. So let's just get this guy nice and. Uh, all right, around like six. My max counts around like sixty-two thousand now, sixty-one thousand. Okay, so let's just leave it like that. We'll stop it. Okay, now now I'm ready to go, right? Because now I got, uh, you know, my highest gain tuned to a level of, of not saturation. So let's do this. So let's go back to my spider, and I can run this now. I think I think I've done everything I wanted to do. Uh, let me just make sure the. I'll do a quick check sanity checks to make sure if I turn this guy to zero does my signal go away because yep it goes back to my bias so it's yeah so you know and, and that's because my 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 trigger out for which shutter open and the shutter is in normal mode. I can change this to zero um, my trigger out is with shutter open so I'm, I'm triggering the the I'm gating the diode with the shutter open signal, so it's only gonna when when exposure time is zero, it's, the guy diode's not gated, so it's not gonna fire. So, you know, I, I can just leave that level of I don't have to change the diode current to change the level of light, um, which is what I want because I want every all the light to be consistent for this experiment. So now I'm gonna initialize uh, initialize cycle. I'm gonna run that. Now I could have probably call it like a different name or something more accurate, but it is what it is, right? So let's run that. So light fields me getting the data. Okay, so I'll show you what's going on here. I'm gonna, you know, slide this over. So it's printing out as it goes along. You see, um, and you can see the nominal gains are are fairly accurate. On a Pixis, by rule of thumb, is like four, two, and one for low, medium, high, and and we're getting that for for all of these. So, um, and that's low noise. Now it's going to high cap. So you can see it's four times as much as the, the low noise. So everything's working fine. Now we're going to go to 100 kilohertz. Everything is peachy. Yep. OK, and those are my gains. OK, so I have my gains. And now just, I guess, to close the loop, I'll go to the, uh, 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 so, yeah, I just moved my screen a bit. So I'm, I'm going to change my screen back. And now I'm going to go to uh, my files. So if you go to, uh, where is it? I have my light field. I just go to my users. I have that directory I created, Python gain log. So you can see I just, this is the recent one I just created for the serial number. And if I drag this over, there you go. So there's there's my gains written out nice and neat and now I know the camera you know I just did a spot check on the camera and, and I know it's working properly rather than me having go go through all these settings and doing these getting these images subtracting them you know this just saves me a lot of time and this is why automation is just so awesome so that will conclude my video I hope this was informative and thanks a lot for watching